right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today, this is a video I hate doing. The dreaded crypto tax video. It's a nightmare. It's the boogeyman. And I really honestly think for the U.S., the IRS has implemented these policies, procedures, almost to intimidate people to not use crypto. Because I think governments are scared of crypto uh, because it gives power to the people. And governments hate that. I have worked with the government in the past, one-on-one, -on, -one, on contracts and that. I'm being honest. Government people are the worst people on the earth. Uh, if you work with these people, it's a cradle-to-the-grave job, white-collar welfare. They do not care about you. They care about themselves. I'm being honest. I have not met maybe one out of a thousand was a nice person, and then they left and became contractors to save their souls. That's it. I had to say that because taxes is the boogeyman. It's a scary subject. So related to crypto, let's just go through this real quick. Probably a 20 minute video because I'm going to read crap. Just so you know, I am not a tax person. I am not a CPA. I This is what I do. This is the information I have received. You do with it what you want. The whole point of this video, I'm going to say, hire a CPA that knows about the crypto rules that are coming out. He will tell you what you need to provide. I'm going to read you what I received. But you need to hire a CPA. Don't do it yourself. Just pay the money the first year just to exp so, so they can tell you and handle all the transactions and all the information you need to report. And with these guys, with these jokers in the government, it's best to over-report because we are in a wealth swap. They are trying to take every dollar they can from you. There's something going on in this country, and it's not, not a pleasant thing. So I'm just being realistic. It's the cold, hard truth. No matter what side of the ideolo ideological fence you're on, they still want your money. So you just got to know the rules, over-report, and just, you know, get a CPA to cover your butt. It's just not worth the headache dealing with these folks. I will say this once. I dealt with one IRS person years ago, and it was over a small knit where I got a couple, almost $10 capital gains on something, but I never received the dividend form. The ten, I forget what it is. Ah, one of those confirmations that you got dividends from the company. So they said, hey, you didn't report this. I said, well, I never got it. I'm really sorry. I was polite. She was a Southern lady. That was probably it because the South is polite. And uh, no, there was, they waived the penalty and they just took care of it right there. They just forgave it and said, okay, we got it. No problem. That was the only case. So that is the only amendment to my previous statement. So let's get into it. Oh, let's get into it. Okay. This paragraph on the left is what I got direction from a cpa i work with all right cryptocurrency right up here guys we strongly remind you that crypto activity must be reported they're strongly reminding me i think cpas hate this stuff because it is a lot of reporting it's computers you're doing lots of transactions it's not your normal uh investing dividends or investing equities and selling equities which is pretty straightforward you're not doing millions of transactions on those Whereas crypto, there's a lot of transactions from mining, from staking, uh, from smart nodes, uh, from buying and selling, from rewards now on credit cards, from uh, using the Brave browser, you get rewards. Lots and lots of transactions, and they're treated differently as income, as gift rewards, blah, blah, blah. Mostly it's income because guess what? They can tax you. They love taxing people. Anyway, cryptocurrency. We strongly remind you that crypto activity must, must be reported to us so that we may appropriately report it on your tax return. Additionally, because of the compliance rules, and they're really stating this, guys. This is a CPA telling the client. He, they're trying to get through you. Just report it, man. Don't, don't mess around. Get the best records you can and report it. Now, you are hiring a CPA. He is really just kind of signing off on what you're giving him. You're doing the legwork. Know this. Know that whenever you're working with CPA, you're actually gathering all the information for him and he's putting it into his system. 
And in the case of crypto, you're giving him the actual IRS form. And I'll, I'll mention that in a minute. Uh, but you're doing the work. It's just not hire and forget. You're going to have to prepare some time, sit your butt down and do the work just to cover yourself and get through it. You're dealing with crypto. Now you got to deal with the mama bear. He wants your money. All right, let's go. All right, we strongly remind you that crypto activity must be reported to us so that we may appropriately report it on your tax return. Additionally, because of the compliance rules, the reporting is extra <laughs> extraordinarily complex and we will need you to consider using a tax basis tracking software to even start trying to prepare your return. Call us from Alice for recommendation. There are several out there. Uh, I am using cointracking.info. I'll put a link below. It is an affiliate. Big deal. Whoopee. Um, but you can do thousands of transactions for a couple bucks a year. And uh, there's different plans. And again, I'll put the link. There's a bunch out there. And uh, I'll, I'm trying to match what he mentioned. Just to be fair, he mentioned zenledger.io is one of them. Z-E-N-L-E-D-G-E-R.io. And this is where you report you import all your transactions and it'll do all the forms for you. So like regarding crypto, we require our clients to have their information in Schedule D and IRS form 8949 format ready. My point being these CPAs, when you hire them, you best hire one, is to, they, all right, they want you to do the, you have to do the work is my point. So use these tracking softwares because again, there's lots of transactions and just import them. But even though you import them, especially with coin tracking info, stuff is off. If there's not a matching deposit from a withdrawal, a sale from a buy, and there's no cost basis on a trade, it's gonna barf. You gotta go correct that crap. So like like you're using QuickBooks for a business, you have got to resolve or reconcile those transactions. Your accountant just wants the final form. He's not gonna do this for you. I'm not sure you can hire him. It's gonna be a book bookkeeping charge it's going to be expensive but they want you to use um, software to do this and they want you to get them the final schedule d irs form 8949 as well uh, in the format because they're going to import it and double check your balances i think oh uh, let's see yeah then they say zen the zen ledger uh they say they can combine various wallets based on reporting you provide them from each i use coin tracking.info and they will repair they will prepare these forms as well. And uh, that's where I'm going right now. And that's what I'm using. And I'm starting to import all my stuff. Uh, their, their other comment I received is the ideal is, uh, the, the idea is that you provide us the Schedule D 8949 and Schedule C. I believe the IRS will allow us to attach a PDF of Schedule D and Form 8949 uh, that you e file tax return. All right, blah, 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 they're all this stuff. And uh, what I'm doing too, if you're mining, for the mining, you should provide us an income statement showing revenues and related expenses either in Excel or via QuickBooks. If you are keeping a, uh, a general ledger, a GL, just like any other sole proprietor business. All right, so I have to do that as well. Yeah. So there's then he goes, read the, read the attachment of virtual currency. I'll, I'll read that to you guys as well. Uh, yeah, virtual currency regarding how you record your income, etc. And the CPA is telling me it is very complicated, as you all know. So use the software and you can write this crap off. Put yourself down. I was going to do an LLC, but there was no point to do an LLC because what am I protecting myself from myself? I didn't form an LLC. There was no point in it. And I why spend the extra money to form an LLC and pay the state fees and all that crap? So I decided I'm just gonna keep a record of all of my purchases, my expenses, and uh, file as a sole proprietor, which will be treated as self-employment income. So now with that, you may be paying self-employment tax, which is higher than you know most other taxes. <laughs> Welcome to the wonderful world of taxes. That's why you need to hire a CPA that has uh, experience with this or no or knows what is expected and needs to be filed. So let's go on. I'm sorry this video is going to be a little bit wordy, but it's nothing exciting. It's the dreaded tax video. I'm not flamboyant. I'm not charismatic. I'm just, 
a regular idiot who mined crypto. I've got rewards in crypto. I got credit card rewards. I've got interest on crypto, uh, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just a regular Joe learning as I go, as most of you are as well. And I'm telling you what you should be thinking about doing. Again, this is what I'm doing and I'm not a tax advisor. I'm just saying, get a tax advisor, get a CPA and uh, use this as a starting point just to say, oh God, I got to get my, my act together and uh, start looking at tax tracking software for crypto and getting a CPA that is knowledgeable on this. And considering if you bought 10,000 bucks worth of GPUs, files a sole proprietor, it's going to be extra income. But if it's a write-off, if you're going to write off 10,000 bucks and say you made $10,000 in crypto mining, you're going to hopefully null that out. Also, if you had equities, like say you bought, uh, what's a bad stock? Uh, I don't know. Say you bought a stock, an equity, like General Motors, and then you sold it for a loss of 10000 but you made 10000 crypto. My, you know, the equities go, again, you're, you're, you're kind of balancing each other. Like, oh, I made capital gains here, but I made a capital gains loss there. There's short-term, long-term capital gains. There's a lot of stuff here, guys. So that's why I'm saying just get on the phone now, start looking for a CPA. And on cointracking.info, they have a list of CPA shops that deal with their software as well. So you can probably just send the file over to the to those people and they can handle it for you. Do your own research, man. Do it, do it, do it. You gotta do your own research on this crap. Don't mess around. IRS wants your money. <clears throat> they don't care who you are, they just want your money. All right. Here are the seven activities that require individual transaction reporting in addition to just reporting the existence of the account. <laughs> oh my god. You read that correctly. Each individual transaction must be individually reported. For example, if you use a cryptocurrency to buy a cup of coffee, we must report that transaction individually on your return. Holy crap. Do you see my point? I read this and went, are you joking? I didn't know it was that bad. I think the government is trying to discourage people from using crypto because they're afraid of it. They are afraid, like the Chinese government's afraid of it. India, uh, where's the other place they're trying to lock it down? They're afraid of it because it gives power to the people and independence. And that's, come on. You may look up Red Pill, wake up people. You know, it's a big club and you ain't in it. I'm going to keep saying that on every video. You are just not, you're not even a cog in the machine. You're just, a, you're not even a minion. You're just a little speck and to be used by the powers that be, man, that's all. It's, it's, it is what it is. And that's why you got to hire a decent CPA to help you through this minefield. It's horrible. All right. Here are some of the transactions. Number one, selling, converting crypto to US dollars. So if you have uh, one Bitcoin and you turn it to fiat, that's a transaction and you're going to have to pay. You got to record that. Trading one crypto for another. Oh, I have a bunch of Ethereum, but I want to now buy Bitcoin with it. Guess what? Ethereum to Bitcoin, any coin to another coin is a trade and you must report it because you're going to say, what was my cost basis of that original coin? And then when I sold it to buy the other coin, you got to figure out what the, uh, if there was a capital gain, short term, long term, or a loss, and you got to report that. They don't really care about, um, they care about losses, but they want to take your money. So a loss is not going to help them, but you got to report it. It's a capital gain, loss, or gain, short term, long term. All right. Oh, and here's the other one we already mentioned for the coffee. Um, spending crypto directly for goods and services. I've actually never done that yet. So some people will say, well, they'll accept crypto when you buy crap. You got to put that down. I bought a computer for, with crypto. That's amazing. So you got to record that. Number four, mining crypto from your own computers. And that's what I do. Uh, I have all my wallets reported. Uh, let's see. Every time I get a payout in my wallet, I'm recording that. And when I import it, the payout, say I get my payout from Ethermine and it goes to my Voyager wallet. It gets put in as deposit. When I import that into cointracking.info, 
I will go in and say, I'll change that trade to mining and I'll put it in a group called mining. That way I can search for all my mining activity and then I know it's mining. So mining to me is gonna be treated as income. And then you put it as your cost basis. I got it in at this price on this date. So I got my Ethereum to my wallet, my payout, and Ethereum at that time was 4,000 bucks. And right now, of course, it's down to like 3,000 bucks, but I didn't sell. But from my understanding, again, not tax advice, that's income. Boom, blammo, they got you. All right, anyway, let's go to five. Staking and lending crypto and receiving payment in crypto or dollars. Yes, I stake and I don't make much. It's pennies, right? Come on. I don't, but it's still just report the crap. And uh, I receive payment also in crypto in a way of rewards from credit cards, from using Brave Browser. It's actually paid to me. So I earned it. You got to be thinking about that crap. Six, receiving airdrop crypto. I've never done that. And seven is getting paid in crypto. Like you always hear now, people just want to get their paychecks in crypto, which I never understood. Why not just get your paycheck in fiat, have all the tax bull crap, W-2, Social Security already taken out, take what's left over, what little bit is left over after your government takes all of your money, and then go buy crypto. So I don't I don't understand that part of getting right now at the at the point we're in in this society with this uh, cryptocurrency, why you wouldn't would, would, would want to get paid in crypto. Maybe someone could explain the benefit there. Just take your fiat, whatever's left over, like you're investing in stocks and just buy your Bitcoin, who knows, whatever. All right, items one, two, and three require that we report each and every transaction separately on your return. Oh, that's funny, so what about four? So wait, selling, trading, and spending, they want every transaction separately on your return. Potentially hundreds or thousands of transactions must be reported if you are spending cryptocurrency trading even via a bot, mining, etc. The IRS has instituted significant penalties for, uh, for failure to report crypto activities as much as 50% of the highest balance in the account each year. They hate us. They hate crypto people. The government obviously hates us. They're, they're just really making it a pain in the butt. It's obvious. Come on. I, like I said, I'm a, I'm a common idiot. And I can see, like, this is just ridiculous. Come on. Leave it to the government to destroy a good thing. Um, so this should really should be items one, two, three, and four if you're mining. Because he's saying they want to know every transaction for your mining. And for me, that means I'm going to get clarification. But when I get a payout from a pool, that payout to my wallet now becomes mine. And that is my transaction. And that's what I'm reporting via my... Um, via my import in the coin tracking.info. I need clarification on that because if I, I'm, if you're tracking every little thing as you accumulate, that's crazy. Like I set my payouts to whatever 0.5 ETH on Ethereum, Ethermon, and I set, uh, you know, 100 RTM on Raptorium mining, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I need to clarify that it's the payout you're reporting. So again, I don't know all the details yet. I'm just going by what I think and based on reading. All right, then there's some more crap about regular stuff. So let's go over to virtual currencies. I told you this would be a long and boring video. And it's like getting, uh, uh, what do you call that, root canal? But I ran my basic stuff through right now and coin tracking came out with my promo. Eh, all right, it's a boogeyman. The hardest part is getting all the transactions in and getting that uh, Schedule D8949 and Schedule C if you're doing the sole proprietor crap together. But it's just getting the transactions in the one spot and hopefully letting the software do its, its trick uh, right. And it's not that expensive to get these software uh, applications to do your tracking. You just got to report everything. Uh, that's all. Cover your butt. It is what it is. We're not in a free world. So people think it's a free country. It's not. Let's go on virtual currencies over here on the right, guys. Uh, they talk about digital currencies and then they get into the virtual currencies. Um, I mean, there's multiple definitions of virtual currency. So the ones we are looking at here is the, like the cryptos, Litecoin, Ethereum, Doge, Dogecoin, Dash. They don't even mention, oh, here's Bitcoin Cash. They don't even mention it, Bitcoin. But uh, again, there's cryptocurrencies, which I think you guys are watching this about. 
again, I'm going to say it again, get a CPA to help you with this crap. Uh, da, da, da. Here, this is just basic stuff you should know. Uh, you can screenshot this right now. I'm not going to sit here and read this to you. It just goes over the basic of what virtual currencies are and gives you an example for people that don't know. Because some people probably got paid in crypto and they don't know. It's like, oh, what do I do with this crap? And uh, like, here's Wyoming. They have their own special thing uh, to, to enable um, companies with blockchain technology to flourish. That's kind of cool. Let's go on. Let's just more and more talking about it. Approximately 14% of Americans now own cryptocurrency in some form. I'm going to say that's higher with all the buzz and all the big boy financial companies getting involved who are driving down Bitcoin right now so they can buy in at a lower price. That's what's happening. It's being manipulated. But having known that, play the game. You can't, you know, bitch and moan all you want. But if they're manipulating the price to go lower to the 40s, know that. And it's like the uh, Congress people buying stocks. You kind of know what they're buying because they have to publish it. Even though it doesn't seem right, they have to publish what they're buying. Follow their lead. Hey, right? Like the one, the one Congress person bought Tesla uh, maybe six months ago, and I already had Tesla. I bought more. Boom, the thing shot up over a thousand bucks. Again, they know stuff we don't know. Play the game, right? Uh, let's see, go on here. There's some IRS notices. I'm not gonna, again, here, screenshot this. Let's go on down. Here's some examples. So, this is kind of cool. I like examples. The next step for the taxpayers is to determine what kind of asset the virtual currency is. The currency can be classified as a capital asset, personal use property, an investment, or inventory, just to name a few. A capital asset is defined as almost anything that is not a non-capital <laughs> asset. Examples of which are your home, furnishings, automobiles used for pleasure, coins, and timber. Non-capital assets such as inventory do not get capital gain treatment. Instead, all gains or losses are treated as ordinary income transactions. So then they give you a nice little example. Biff paid $100, blah, blah, blah. You can read through it. And it's, it, once you read the example, it's pretty straightforward. I think the hardest part is getting all your transactions together. Everyone has multiple wallets. People have mine. People have gotten Visa credit rewards and Bitcoin. People got paid in Bitcoin. That's the hardest part is getting them consolidated into a common piece of uh, crypto tracking tax software. And that, you know, it is what it is. You entered this world. Now you got to pay the price. <laughs> and the government hates you and they want to take all your money. So do your best to report everything accurately. And then don't let them take all your money. Let's see, uh, let's see, virtual currencies are not eligible for like-kind treatment. The sale would be reported on the form 8949, yep, that's what I mentioned before, as a transaction. Classified as not on a 1099B and would flow to the Schedule D, holy crap. I have actually had a few businesses, I know these terms and I've dealt with this crap, and I use QuickBooks and all QuickIn and all this stuff. It's still it's still tedious, AF. It's still tedious, guys. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, and here's another Biff. Read these out. You can read them yourself. I'm not going to waste your time reading them. Just freeze the video. Read these examples if you don't have a clue. This is just to educate yourself. So when you go hire a CPA, ask them, do you understand over here? This is the key paragraph, guys. I want you to. Again, I'm an idiot. I'm just the average guy. And I have a microphone and I'm putting out videos that no one watches. Big deal, right? But if this helps somebody, this is how I'm learning. Some stuff I didn't know. And I've been doing this since 2017. And I'm reporting and reporting using cointracking.info to report. And I've had no issues. Uh, I'm just telling you, each year is getting worse and worse of what you have to report. If anything, screenshot this paragraph right here, the cryptocurrency, and find a CPA that understands that, and then read the stuff on the right here with the examples to understand the types of like-kind sales, transactions, is it a capital asset? Long-term, short-term, 
Anyway, now for miners. Miners, this is section, this is the last section. Let's just get into mining. I mine. Uh, let's see, is mining profitable right now? A little bit. Uh, electricity. I found out my electricity cost. I'm like, really? All right, almost a little over 12 cents. I'm like, really? I'm a little irked by that. Uh, plus, crypto's down big time. It's, uh, I think as we speak, 40K on Bitcoin and 3,000 on Ethereum as of whatever date this is. I think of this month. It's only the 10th. Ugh. January 10th. I hate January. I want January to be over. All right, let's go. All right, mining for virtual currency. Just as a bank compensates its employees to track your transactions, virtual currencies compensate those who use their knowledge and computer programming abilities to record and track the blockchains that carry the transaction information. Often, this compensation comes in the form of rewards of virtual currency, which is known as mining. Hoorah! A taxpayer can program their computer to solve various algorithms and in doing so eventually receive a reward of virtual currency for performing the service. When a taxpayer performs a service and receives re... Oh my God, I went to public school, so words are hard for me. Remuneration? <laughs> yeah, okay. For that service, it is... I guess you're getting paid for that service. Uh, it is taxable income. You're getting paid for that service, so you are taxed. All right. If the service is provided in a manner that is regular, continuing, and for profit, and rises to the level of a trade or business... It is income subject to self-employment tax. Yeah. So if you're making a lot, dudes, you're going to report it as income and you're going to have to pay that lovely self-employment tax in the U.S. You wait till you find out about self-employment tax. It's double normal W-2 tax. I remember paying this crap. Oh, that's why you want to live in a state that doesn't have withholding. Like, I lived in Maryland, one of the worst states in the country. Worst state, absolutely. Worst governor, worst people. Uh, worst businesses. Businesses are fleeing. The only businesses there is DOD crap. And uh, it's a horrible place to live. You have withholding tax. You have county tax. They had a stupid rain tax based on the square footage of your property. They would charge you a tax because they figured there'd be runoff from the rain and you had to pay a tax. It was instigated by some greenie broad. It was ridiculous. A uh, horrible state. The uh, cops will pull you over just for blinking while you're driving. It's kind of like they are um, will violate your rights at every turn. Yeah, the car, Howard County, Maryland, horrible, horrible county, horrible state. Uh, I don't know how I got on that tangent. I'm just saying there are some really bad states out there for taxes. I think Maryland's worse than California for taxes. Uh, and then at least California has nice weather. And outside of the cities, the people are nice. It's just the cities are horrible, whereas Maryland, it's just a horrible place. Live there long enough to say this, and I can stand by it, and I have receipts. Uh, yeah, get out of Maryland if you live there. Go to a state like Florida or Texas or somewhere. I think te Texas, no, non-withholding state. And what's funny about that, side note, if you're, say, making 100000 bucks in Maryland, you're paying withholding tax in Maryland, which is roughly, for me, it was 15%. You're paying that to the stupid state to fund stuff you don't really agree with, right? When I left that state and went to a state that didn't have withholding, I immediately gave myself that 15% raise. That money stayed in my pocket and benefited me. So people don't think about that crap. You just go through life and you get your paycheck and you don't realize the taxes that are being taken out. The local taxes are, tend to be the worst, worse than the federal taxes. Like I said, for me in Maryland, I'm using that, man. Uh, it was the uh, state withholding. And when I was self-employed, I had a business, I'd have to do quarterly taxes. It was a, it was, it was, it drive you nuts when you write those massive checks out every quarter. You quick, quickly learn to become conservative because that is your money, your sweat, your blood coming out, and you're giving it to the government. Like here you go, <laughs> it's just insane. If that doesn't wake people up, I don't know what will. Uh, so I did the quarterly taxes. Then you do the county taxes, which is ridiculous. And then, oh my God, like I said, the rain tax. I know there's another tax, probably an air tax for just breathing. Uh, it's just, again, Maryland's the worst state. If you don't believe me, look it up. It's crazy, horrible, horrible, horrible. Let's get off that. I'll make another video on Maryland, how not to live in Maryland. But get out and go, and go to a non-withholding state. But bring 
a new perspective of who you vote for, vote for the, the correct way so you're not getting people in office that are going to eventually start taxing you again. Don't bring the poison you left with you. That's my advice. Wake up. Use your critical thinking skills. You, most people can learn. I think I'm still trying to figure that one out. But anyway, let's go on. So there's the self-employment tax. Uh, you got the service. So mine, talking about mining here. If the service does not rise to the level of a business, then it is reported as a hobby and the income will report it as other income on statement one of 1040. Yeah. I think I didn't make that much because I started late in the year. So I'm probably, oh, la, 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 I am probably a hobby. It's subject to self-employment tax. La, 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 la. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm, uh, let's see. We'll figure that out. Again, another question I have. See, I don't have all the answers. I don't know. I'm just reporting what I know. I'm just the messenger here, guys. So that's why you need a CPA. So I already came up with a couple of questions on my own here on payouts when, when you report that as a taxable transaction from mining. And also, it, did you make enough to be a hobby or a business to pay the self-employment tax? Yeah, get yourself a CPA. All right, the value of the service is determined by the fair market value or exchange rate of the currency on the date of receipt by the taxpayer. So to me, when I get my payout from Ethermine or one of these pools, when that little puppy payout goes into my wallet, at that date, I need to record the price. So that is what I received. That's the fair market value, and that's what I got paid. So like I say, even I got paid on Ethermine, it was a 4,000 bucks on that date. My understanding, even if the Ethermine goes down to a thousand bucks, tough. I got paid out at the fair market value at 4,000 bucks. You need to record that. That's my understanding. Okay, at the point that the taxpayer receives the virtual currency, the currency itself becomes a capital asset in the hands of the taxpayer. Subsequent disposition of the currency would be guided by the rules of disposition, meaning short or long-term capital loss reported on the form, the old form 8949, yep, that's what my CPA said, yep, as capital gains or losses. The gain or loss on disposition of the currency would not be a business gain or loss unless the taxpayer was also a dealer in the currency and the currency qualifies as inventory in the hands of the dealer. So my understanding here, oh, there's a note. All right. Anyway, my understanding here, I get paid out, like I said, in ether and say it was a 4,000 bucks at 12 o'clock or on January 1st, whatever. I have that ETH. Right now, my strategy is to hold. But if I took that ether mine and ether, ETH, Ethereum went up to um, 5,000, I just made $1,000 short-term capital gain because I got it. And the next day, oh, Ethereum jumped up 1,000. I sold it. That's a short-term capital gain. I got nine report that. So I got the taxable event being paid when I mined it as, you know, I got that fair market value, but now I got it. It's an asset. Boom. Then I sold it. Now you got to report that as well. Isn't it awesome? <laughs> Welcome to the real world, folks. If this doesn't wake you guys up, yeah, I don't know what will. You know, wake up, vote accordingly. <laughs> it's... They, the government wants to take all your money. It's ridiculous. Yeah, they, they really want to discourage crypto, and they're doing their best to do it. All right, we read that note. Uh, let's see. Oh, he gives a little example here. I'm not going to read it. You can read this. I don't want to waste any more of your time. I hope this helps. Oh, my God, I'm already 34 minutes in. Dudes, I just read you one paragraph and a page pretty much two pages it took 34 minutes and it's just telling you what they want you need to get a cpa and you need to get some crypto tracking software to import import all your wallets all your transactions from exchanges block five voyager coinbase some of these exchanges individually may give you tax information reporting stuff you need to look into that but sometimes it might be best to aggregate them consolidate them into one tracking software and again, I'm I'm not pushing it, but I use Cointracking.info, and for you know, like I said, there's also ZenLedger.io, which my CPA mentioned. 
I already have coin tracking and paid for it, so I'm not going to go buy Zen Ledger. Uh, coin tracking.info has been around, and I've been using it since 2017 or so, and I have no issue, and they generate their reports for me. Now, having said that, once I generate this crap and get it to my CPA, he may come back and say, wrong, do it again. I'm going to, oh. Then I'm going to be up all night using Zen Ledger to import my stuff. I don't know yet. See, I'm just going through it. I'm going to start in February once uh, all the exchanges get their, their stuff finalized and reporting finalized. And I start getting my other stuff too, my uh, W-2s and whatever income, my dividends and stuff from equities. And once I get all my stuff, then I'll start looking again at my crypto uh, coin tracking info stuff and generating those reports. I've already started a couple days ago and resolving some of the uh, conflicts, the, uh, the reconciling the errors. One of them was USDC. It didn't know what I purchased for that. So I have to go and make sure I find the corresponding transaction, why it wasn't imported. Well, would you purchase it? Well, I purchased it. It's one-to-one -one US fiat to USDC, stuff like that. You just need to reconcile it. Anyway, here you go. I thought I put this video out. I was hesitant to do this crap. I am not an expert at this in any way. This is not financial tax advice. I'm giving you my personal experience, my personal attitude, because I hate it. And I see what they're doing. They're trying to discourage people from doing this. They're just making it difficult. The tax codes in this country are, are, are just horrible. Just pay a flat rate. I mean, come on. This is, this is ridiculous. Uh, get a CPA. Talk to him first. Take the left paragraph here and say, do you know about this crap? And if he does, then you're, you might be good to go and say, and ask him what software do you recommend? I use Cointracking.info. See what he says about that. Zen Ledger's out there. There's a whole bunch of them out there now because businesses know they can make money. You know, in like in crypto and mining, think about history. Who made the most money during the gold rush and mining? And you watch some of these gold rush shows on Discovery for entertainment. Do you ever notice who's making all the money? It's not the miners. It's the people that sell services and the equipment to the miners are the ones that get rich. Isn't you gotta look at that. And having myself spent a lot of money on GPUs and that, you know, obviously the GPU makers, the NVIDIA and AMD are making all the money. The people providing the software to mine are making their um, donations, you know, when they when they do their fees, the pools are making the money. So the actual miner, as it trickles through, you're making pennies. I don't know. Some are making decent money, but in general, if you want to make real money, you provide a service like the Cointracking.info, the Zen Ledgers. They're going to make a lot of money through subscriptions, uh, yearly subscriptions per transactions to import your, tran your tax transactions and generate the form 8949, Schedule D, all that good stuff that your accountant wants. So the point being, you have to prepare a lot ahead of time for crypto, whereas you, before... I remember I just gave my W-2s and my tax form, my uh, stock forms on capital gains and dividends, and I was done. Now I've got to do more, and it's uh, hopefully this tax coin tracking info keeps doing what it's been doing for me for the past few years is providing the right forms. I forget. It's, I can't remember even last year what I, what I provided. I don't even think I had much last year. But anyway, look at this stuff. Do your own research. Get your CPA. And uh, misery loves company, but start early on your crypto crap. Just sit down, pick a night after the kids go to bed or it's quiet for an hour or two, and just do a little bit at a time so it's not overwhelming. Uh, start with one wallet and import it and uh, look at all the transactions you imported. Make sure it kind of reconciles, you know what I mean? And then go from there. Hope this helps. Not tax advice, not financial advice. Good luck. Go forth and enjoy the pain, baby. Welcome to the United States of America. All right. Tax time. Best time of year. <laughs> All right. Take care. I am out.